Make Yakety Yak Wireless your first stop. Our experienced sales staff will help you choose the phone that's best for you. We carry a vast array of basic and smartphones, and we sell used and unlocked phones, and provide the best in iPhone repair. Come into Yakety Yak Wireless. This is the iPhone 4S. We're going to show you a disassembly video of it today to show you just how different it is from the iPhone 4. A couple of things. You may hear that the screens are interchangeable with the iPhone 4. That is incorrect. However, the Verizon, Sprint, and AT&T versions of the 4S do use the same screen. First thing we need to do is take out the SIM card tray. You can use a bent paper clip for this. Don't forget to remove this. After this, you must use a Penelope screwdriver, not the standard Phillips head, to remove the two base screws. The back will then slide off towards the top after you remove the base screws. The battery of the iPhone 4S is different than the iPhone 4. There are two screws holding down the connecting plate. After you remove the screws, there is a tiny little attenuator that mounts underneath one of the screws. Be sure not to lose this. And there's the attenuator. To remove the battery, some people pull on the plastic tab, but that can break it, thus voiding your warranty. The best way to do it is to use a spudger and come in from the opposite end. To remove the adhesive, you can then also use it from the near end and that should free the battery up. After removing the battery, it's time to disconnect some of the uh, flex cables. The best way to do that is to start by removing the EMI shields. You need a Phillips head screwdriver. There are two screws for the first EMI shield. Most of the screws in the iPhone 4 are different sizes, so make sure you arrange them in order to help you in reassembly. Now you can use your blue pry bar to pull up this uh, initial flex cable. That's the dock port flex cable. Be careful not to tear it. It is held by some adhesive. After this, we're going to remove the top EMI shield. It has four connecting screws. Be very careful when removing this that you don't tear any of the upper flex cables. It also helps before you remove the actual EMI shield to remove the secondary EMI shield that is over to the right side of it as a single screw connecting it right here. You can then use a pair of tweezers to pull out this EMI shield. It actually has a little V prong on it. As you can see here, it's snug in there. Once it's out, set that aside and you're ready to remove the EMI shield. That's the top flex cable for the antenna. Now, be careful removing this. It does have two tabs at the bottom for when we receipt it. There are six flex cables that must be disconnected. The first two are going to be the digitizer and the LCD flex cable. Next you have four more flex cables. One of them is hidden. The first one is going to be the camera. And you can just take the camera out and set it aside. And then the three that control the volume buttons, the mute switch, the headphone jack. And the third one's tucked underneath. So fold those back. And there's the third one. After disconnecting all of these, you're ready to move on to the dock port. There are two screws and one antenna cable holding the lower dock port into place. This is actually the speaker microphone box. So you can first remove the two screws and then disconnect the flex cable. Be very careful not to tear that, 
that little microphone cable. And here's the little microphone cable that you need to work on. It just weaves its way into the motherboard. You disconnect it, dock port lifts out. Again, be very careful of that cable. Next, we're going to remove the motherboard. There are four screws that you can plainly see and one that is hidden underneath some tape. The first way to start, there's two special screws that you need to use a flathead screwdriver on. The lower right and the upper right. After that, the other ones just are a regular Phillips head. the second screw, third screw, the fourth screw is the upper right, and then this last screw is hidden on the upper left. You have to fold back some tape, and when you fold it back it will reveal the screw which also has another little attenuator on it that you have to remove after you take out the screw and not lose. Here's the last screw. And here is the attenuator. Right there. You can just make sure that you put that back when you rebuild the phone. Now the motherboard should just lift out cleanly. The motherboard is now out. The last thing you need to remove before the screen is a vibration motor. You can use a blue pry stick. It's just held down with tape and it's actually outlined on the back of the mid plate on exactly where it goes for when you need to put it back in. Just be careful not to damage the springs that it has that it uses to connect to the motherboard. Now there's ten screws. Nine of them are plainly visible. One in the upper left corner is actually hidden behind some tape. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove them. The six screws along the side also have washers that you need to make sure to replace. There's the tape hiding the uh, one screw. So now we're going to remove the screws. After you remove the screws, you're ready to uh, remove the screen. It is held down by adhesive in two parts, which I'll show you here in a second. A heat gun, um, preferably one with an adjustable temperature set to 120 degrees, is the best way to loosen up that adhesive. Um, or a hair dryer set on low. Don't overheat it because you could damage the electronical components. best way to start from the two sides because you can get there's no adhesive there the adhesive runs across the top and the bottom now if you take your thumb and press down to create a little bit of a pressure it creates a gap for you and from that gap you can actually get the screen off you don't have to worry about damaging any components when you do this because they're all pretty much out of the way You see the screen breaks its seal. Just don't push down too far because you do have two cables you have to feed through after you've removed the screen. Okay, here are the two cables and you're going to feed those right through the mid plate and the screen comes apart. 
I'd like to remind you that the screen is not interchangeable with the iPhone 4. This is your mid plate. So the home button on the iPhone 4S is different than that of the iPhone 4. The actual button is physically attached to the screen and the mounting connect the, while the connectors are the same the mounting points are different and will not work and you can see that home button is now physically attached to the screen hope you've enjoyed this uh, disassembly video remember to come into yakety yak wireless or look us up at yak it up